we're going to have a React product catalog front end that talks to an Express.js backend, so an API. We're going to show the consumer workflow. We're going to show the provider workflow. And we're going to show how we gate a release using a tool called Can I Deploy? Uh, and then we're going to show what happens if we introduce a breaking change and how we can catch that with Pact. Okay, so let's first look at the application. I'm going to start the provider API and I'm going to start the React website that talks to it just so you can get a sense of what the application is that we're actually testing. Okay, here it is. Not the most interesting application. You can see here we have a product listing page. It's got three products. If I choose see more, it's gonna get the individual product. Both of those pages are powered by API calls and they're the API calls that we're gonna cover in our pack test. Specifically, we're going to cover the API call that powers this individual product page. So if I just do a little refresh here and look at the XHR calls and zoom right in, We'll see here that there's a call to localhost 8080 forward slash product 09 and we get back a JSON payload, okay? If I go back to my terminal and I shut down the provider and refresh this page, we get the sad panda, the API is unavailable. Okay, so let me close those applications down and let's work through it. So let's think of the scenario here that we're creating a new website and the product uh, API doesn't yet exist. So just think of it as a new feature. Now, because this, this is a React website, let's have a little, little bit of a dig into how it actually produces the, the web page and how it calls APIs, and we'll work out how we're gonna test this component. So in the case of our application, we have a product page.javascript, and you can see here it's using a lifecycle event, which is a bit dated. And what happens is when the page loads, this event fires, and it triggers this uh, this line of code here on line 24 to 28, that's actually fetching the product from the API. And then when it gets a resp response back, it'll populate the web page with the data from that call. So let's drill into that. Let's have a look at what it does. So we're now in our API client class, okay? And you can see here, this is actually just plain JavaScript. It actually has nothing to do with React, which is great. So we don't need to worry about any kind of React testing with our packed consumer test, even though it's a React website. Because in the end, there's a piece of code that's responsible for calling an external API, and that's what we're gonna target with our pack test. So in this case, we're going to call the get product method. We're gonna test that method. And you can see what it does here is not very interesting. It uses an HTTP client called Axios. It's going to send a request to the base URL forward slash product forward slash some ID with some authorization headers to get the data is then gonna turn it back into a product class. So if I just quickly go into the product class definition, you'll see it's a very uh, simple class, but if it doesn't get any of those four required properties, it will, it will fail, and that's, that's important. So now we've identified the target of our pack test, we get to write a pack test for it. <laughs> so let's have a look at our pre-written pack test, and I'm just gonna drill down to the exact test we're gonna look at. So this one here is for the product forward slash ID, the single product API. What we're saying is given that ID 10 exists, we wanna retrieve a product and check that our code works. So we're following a standard arrange, uh, act and assert model here. And we'll work through it line by line. So the first thing is when we run this test, uh, we're gonna be calling the get product method as we talked about. And we wanna mock the response that comes back from the API so we can unit test this. So line 19 says, when we do that call, please give me back a product with this data. Line 24 to 41 tells Pact to set this whole scenario up. Now it's a bit lengthy, but it's important because this actually produces some really useful documentation we'll see shortly. So the first thing we do is we say, given that a certain state is existing, in this case, product ID 10 exists, a request to get a single product using the get method uh, at the following path, product forward slash 10, with some authorization tokens. We expect to get back an HTTP 200 with a content type of application JSON and with a body like this thing. So that's our, that's our mock. We're now setting up our mock to behave like the real provider. On line 43 to 45, we're now doing the act. What we do on line 44 
is we configure our API client to talk to our packed mock service instead of the real thing. So this is the stub. On line 45, we're now just invoking our client and we're telling it to go and fetch that product. And in this case, it should talk to our pack server to get back that response we just mocked. And then from line 48 onwards, we just do standard assertions on our, on our response code. So in this case, you can do whatever you think you would normally do to unit test API get product 10. In our case, we're just going to check that it was able to uh, deal with the response from the, from the API and convert it into a product class successfully. Okay, so let's have a look at how that test runs locally. So I'm gonna run npm test. And what this will do is run that pack test. It'll actually run some other packs as well. Okay, that's it, we're done. So if I go into my RDA, uh, there's another contract that I need to get rid of. But you can see there's a contract here. And this has captured the test we just did, plus a few extras that I didn't show you. So you can see there's actually three interactions in this packed file. And the first interaction is the one we just talked about. A request to get a product, given that product ID 10 exists, so on and so forth. So it's gonna look a lot like what, what we just did. Um, now, normally you don't need to look at the contract file very often. You know it's there, it's obviously an important aspect of the, of the process, but you can kind of think of it a bit like a Java class file. You know, you couldn't run your code without the class file, but you don't really look at it very often. The source code is what you care about. So we'll close that down. Okay, so now we've written our pack test. We've created this new feature, which is a product catalog. We now need to communicate this new contract expectation to our provider team who need to implement the code later on. So now we need to publish our contract to the pack broker and push it through our CI and CD pipeline. So let's assume we're, we're doing a, a trunk based development here. We push straight into master and it's going to make its way through to production. The pipeline is going to look a bit like this the first time around. We're going to run our test. They should pass. Step two, you should then publish the contract to the packed broker, the pack flow. Uh, and that's going to be used to store and version this contract. We're then gonna run a tool called Can I Deploy? Uh, now, Can I Deploy basically looks at the state of the system and says, is it safe to remove this version of an application to some environment? So for example, we're gonna ask, is it safe to move the product catalog website to the production environment? And Packflow is gonna say no the first time around because the provider, in this case, our API, has never verified this contract and hasn't communicated that back to the packed broker to say that's what's going on. So we can't deploy it. The provider's never verified the contract. Uh, the packed broker doesn't believe it's safe to make this release. So let's have a look at that in action. So heading to my uh, terminal, I'm just gonna clear out my contracts directory. What I can do is I can actually uh, fake out the CI process, but note this, this demo is actually connected to, to CI and you can see this in action. I'll share the resources afterwards. So running this fake CI process is gonna run those four steps I just talked about. You can see step one is running the pack test and they've passed. Step two is to publish the contracts. That's gone up to pack flow just now. And now we can see stage three is to run the can I deploy check. This has failed. And it's failed for the same reason we talked about. It says there is no verified pact. So the contract has not been verified for this version of the consumer and the latest version of the example provider, which is our back end, tagged production. Basically, there is no provider in production that satisfies this contract. It's not safe to release. What we can do is we can copy this URL and we can have a look at the contract that's been published. And here you'll see why those extra details are useful. We can see here there's a contract. A pact is basically what we call a contract in pact land between this application, which is the consumer website and this backend provider. You can see the current version of the consumer is this, this hash. It was published one minute ago. And you can see there's three interactions in this contract that needs to be confirmed by the provider before it's safe to release. So you can see a request to get a product given that product ID 10 exists. This is the one we were just looking at. And you can sort of see a visual representation of what our contract testing did. This is really helpful to be able to understand and explore an API, as well as to, to be able to work out what's going on. Okay, so if we go back to the overview of this contract, we can see it's currently unverified 
and the consumer is just being pushed into our master, but it hasn't gone to any environment yet because it's not safe to do so. So our job now is to verify this contract on the provider side. So let's go into our provider code base. We're just gonna look at a couple of things very quickly. We have our pack test set up. Now there's lots of code in here, which is for configuration for demo purposes. But if I simplify it, working from the bottom, we have a command called, uh, which is a verify command. And it just takes a few options. It configures how to find and discover packs, how to, or where to communicate uh, requests to your actual provider and other things around configuring builds and whatnot. So at the top here, you can see we're gonna first start on line uh, seven through 11. That's gonna start our provider API. And then when our test runs, it's gonna tell Pact, do some logging at this level, here's some other properties, but most importantly, where to find my provider to send the request to. We're gonna ignore these other properties for now. And then basically tell the verifier, off you go. Go and get the packs, send the request to this uh, provider and check that they work. So we'll do that first and we'll see some more code a little bit later. So I'm now moving into my provider terminal um, and we're gonna run the fake CI process on this side as well. And what this is going to do is the opposite. The provider now implements this new feature. So it's gonna run the tests, Pact is gonna to go to the Pact broker, pull down all the contracts and verify um, that the provider can satisfy them. It will then send the results of that testing session back to the Pact broker to record which version the provider can or cannot satisfy which versions of the contract. It then runs counter deploy itself. Is it safe to release this version of the provider to production? And then we release. Now in this case, the first time around, the consumer is not in production. So it's always gonna be safe to move this provider to production at this point in time. So let's go back to my terminal and we'll just see what happened. You can see here some logging, the fetching packs for this provider from our test broker, so on and so forth. It's found some contracts. It's running requests against that, the provider, checking all the codes as we go through it. It was all successful. We then ran the counter deploy step. The answer was yes, it was safe to release. And now we've deployed to production. So if I go back to our uh, packed broker and refresh this page that represents the contract, we can now see the contract is green. It's been successfully verified and the provider has now verified it and deployed to production. So now our provider's in production and the contract is all green. We can see all the requests are also green. So happy days, we're now, we're now safe. This now means that we're safe now to merge the change from our consumer, or in this case, we can just rebuild it, which will be able to get us into production. So once we've merged the pact, it will then run the tests. It's gonna publish the contract to the pact broker again, but it hasn't changed. So all the verification statuses will continue to, to work. And now we can run the kind of deploy check. Is it safe to move this consumer to production? The answer is yes, the provider is now in production and that version of the provider satisfies the needs of this consumer. So we deploy. So let's have a look at that process too. So we're gonna run that fake CI process again. It's going to do those four steps. Okay, the test ran, republishing the pact. Can I deploy has passed? We've deployed to production. So again, if I go back and refresh our screen here, you can see that now the, the consumer and the provider is in production, which is great. So, so far all we've done is just proved that those systems can work together. But now maybe we'll see what we can do to break something and some of the extra powers are packed. So now I'm gonna go into the product model on the provider code base. And what we're gonna do is show what happens if we make some changes that could be backwards incompatible and how the provider team can get feedback on a breaking change. The first thing I wanna show you is just commenting out a property called version. So now the provider will never return back a version in its API response. But what I can do now is go, will that break any of my consumers? Again, going back to my terminal for my example provider and running the tests, we'll find out very quickly who it's gonna break, if any. And you can see here that the test actually passed. It didn't break anybody. So even though removing that property would be considered a, break, a breaking change, we know that nobody's actually using that property. If you looked closely in our consumer test, you'd note that we only cared about the ID, the name and the type. 
We didn't care about version. So this is actually a safe operation and Pact lets us do that. And it's one of the reasons why we can't just give a schema to the consumer to say use a schema because we don't actually know what surface area of the schema that the consumer is really using. Whereas using Pact, we get to say exactly which attributes are important and we capture that in the contract. And the other provider has to serve those exact attributes, otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, so first things first, we removed that property, it didn't break, great. What if we remove name? That was definitely used by the consumer. This should break as well, right? This should break the build. And again, we can test this scenario very quickly. We don't need to push into CI or anything like that. And you can see that that test came back within just a few seconds, it took three seconds for the looks of things. So within three seconds, I found out that by removing that property, I would break Packflow example consumer. And then let's say that was an important thing to do. I now know that's a team I need to go and talk to to say, look, we wanna remove the name property, we, we wanna make it something else. Um, you kind of get the idea. So you can see how Pact is going to um, give you the feedback very quickly on your laptop um, that you're gonna break somebody else. And that's really important. If you think about shift left testing, it can't get much more left than the developer itself. It's, it's where the change is happening. You wanna get the feedback before you even commit and Pact lets you do that.